everyone. This is Michael Belasco here from adventuresincre.com. Uh, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how the IRS calculates both the 4% and 9% uh, rate that is then used to multiply the qualified basis to get your um, allotted tax credit amount per year to which you multiply that by the 10 years to get your total tax credit allocation for your project. Uh, if you haven't yet watched the first video, where I walk through this, this calculator here. Um, I would advise you to stop here and go check that out if you're unfamiliar with how um, low-income housing tax credit calculations work for a given project. Uh, that video will explain it. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's a very quick video. Um, but in this one, as I said, we're going to walk through how the IRS sets both of these rates. And uh, you know, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, both the 4% rate and 9% rate are never truly 4% or 9%, except there is a little uh, quirk now, which um, tax credits in the 9% range actually are typically 9% now, but we'll, I'll go through all that in this video. Uh, but first I will show you how it all works and how the IRS does it. All right, so the IRS sets these rates monthly and the methodology behind this rate is as follows. I created this uh, template really to show you how uh, this is done. And so I'm gonna use really simple numbers here so we can really understand it. And then what I'm gonna do is plug in the numbers here to show you how um, this all works with this example. So let's say we have a project and the qualified basis is $100. The goal of the IRS is to take whatever the tax credit is, the tax credit amount is for every year, so over a 10 year hold, is to take those tax credits and discount them back by a, some discount rate so that the present value will equal $30 in this example or 30% of the qualified basis. And so the first step is to come up with the discount rate. And then the second step is to back in to the amount of tax credits over the 10 years. And so let's first uh, discuss how the IRS sets the discount rate. And so the first step is to pull both the midterm and long-term AFR. The AFR is the applicable federal rate. And here is uh, the IRS website or webpage where you can pull these numbers, or you can at least get the background context. In fact, you can actually get the rate from this document. And so the way the math works, so actually first let me show you this really quickly. So down here at the bottom, you'll see what the appropriate percentage for the 30% present value low income housing credit is, and for the 70%, 70% also known as the 9%, and the 30% also known as the 4%. And so how did they get these numbers? And so the methodology, so we'll come up here, it's to take the average of the midterm applicable federal rate and the long-term applicable federal rate on the monthly basis, get the average and multiply that by 72%. Now, I actually don't know the context for that or why that is, that's just the methodology. So let's actually do that. Let's take this 1.73% and then we'll take the 2.13% and we'll plug that into our model. So we have 2.13 and then 1.73. And now we're gonna take the average of that multiply it by 0.72. And now we have our discount rate. All right, so the next step here is we need to figure out what the credit amount is per year so that when you put it in with this discount rate, it will give us a present value of 30. So I'm gonna use goal seek. So what if analysis, goal seek. And I wanna set my present value, actually now let's go to percent of eligible basis, to 0.3 or 30% by changing this cell. We'll hit okay. And we'll let it do its math, and there you go. So let's hit okay. I'll pull this out a couple decimal places. So $3.19 
would be the tax credit per year that our investor would get in order to discount it back to a present value using the 1.39% so that our present value is 30. So again, 3.19, if we go back here, 3.19%. So $3.19 is 3.19% of $100. So that's how this rate is calculated every year. The, the IRS uses these rates, which are determined, I pulled this up from good old Cornell Law School. So the federal short-term rate and the federal midterm and long-term rates um, are basically set based on here. And I haven't really dove into the details here. I don't think it's really necessary, but there is some rhyme and reason to um, where these rates come from. And so that is how it's determined. So 3.19% will be the rate that they issue in the month of February. So now let's actually take this and let's apply this to our project here. So let's do our $43.9 million. And we'll erase this. And so we want to set these credits per year so that the percent of the eligible basis equals $13.17 million or 30% of the qualified basis. Let's go to goal C. Actually, yep, yeah, let's go to what if analysis, goal seek. We want to change this value, percent of eligible basis to 0.3 by changing cell C15 and let's hit OK. Oh, I'm going to hit OK here. I'm just going to close in on the decimal points here. So see so we have one point four million and two hundred eighty dollars and let's go back and one point four million four ten we're off by a hundred or two dollars which is just a a rounding error um and so that is how it's set and if we want to just be explicitly sure see we still have the 30 percent of the eligible basis even using that that number there All right, so just to wrap this up, let's um, come back here and let's actually match this 7.45%. Now, again, I'm not exactly sure why, but there's a little um, nuance here. It's a little bit of a change. So instead of using the monthly uh, AFR for the 9%, they use the annual. And so let's just briefly update this, 1.75 and then 2.15 and we'll change this to 70 70 and we want to make this uh, set to 70 percent so let's go back to our what if analysis set that to 0.7 by changing cell c15 hit ok All right, now let's do our credit per year. What about our qualified basis? And we have 7.447 or 7.45%, which is what our current rate is. All right, and so that is it. Um, you know, this is more an exercise in education. I don't know how much anyone would really use this. What you We'll definitely find useful is this tool here so uh, this was more of a, of a deep dive into understanding how these um, percentages get created on a monthly basis all right so i hope that was helpful and i will see you next time